Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see here on our channel or our website. Reach out to me directly. It's in the description below, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. And today, we're discussing the most talked about watch of 2019. This is the Audemars Piguet Code 1159 Chronograph. 41 millimeters in red gold. We're going to talk about all of the reasons this watch might be a little bit underrated and everything you don't see in the online photography of the model. Let's start with the size, 41 millimeters. It's thinner than I expected at 12.8. Remember, a Rolex Daytona is typically about 12.3, 12.4. Lug to lug, it's 50 millimeters on the nose, and 22 millimeters is the spacing between the lugs. Throw it on the wrist, and it's large, but it doesn't wear larger than its size, the way a Royal Oak does. It wears like a 41. It's beefy, and there's definitely a lot of gold going on here. I would recommend it for a wrist no smaller than 14.5 millimeters, just because it is so substantial it sort of dwarfs the wrist. It, visually, it reads as a bigger watch than it is. Now getting close to talk about the hardware and the software. As you can see, the strap is nicely bolstered and very substantial where it abuts the lugs, so it expands to match the swell of the lug profile. Monotone stitch, folded edge. You can see large rectangular scale alligator leather with a matte blue and a bit of a distressed pattern from the factory. You can see this is a brand new AP factory strap, and AP now using gator on both sides like F.P. Jorn and Chopard. So gator on both sides means this will last longer. It's a more expensive option than calf, but this watch deserves it. Now, here we start with the buckle, and everything is interesting, and everything is thoughtfully designed. You can see there's faceting on the flank of the buckle to echo the faceting on the flank of the case. It's self-attribute to the Royal Oak. You will note that the screws fixing the strap to the case and the buckle to the strap are both hexagonal, another reference to the Royal Oak. You can also see something you easily miss if you just look at photos, the soldier shots online. The lugs themselves are actually quite gossamer, hollowed out and spare. They're graceful even. And they're also nicely tapered. They round off a little bit to their side and then they curve downward. There's a bit of a invert ducktail pattern, so they're squared off on their underside. And then I'm gonna get as close as I can. You can see that the screw is polished, whereas the outer facing is satin thin and there's a lovely transitional bevel that runs all the way around the edge of the lug, both top and bottom. Taking a look at the case band, you can see that there's a lot going on. You've got the bezel, you've got the case back, and then you have this geometrically faceted octagonal case, again, designed to reference the Royal Oak, and one of those design elements that gets lost easily when you just look at this thing head-on online. The crown is large and deeply knurled, which makes it an absolute pleasure to wind. There are rectangular, or let's call them lozenge-shaped chronograph pushers, and then there's this wonderful dihedral crystal which flares up on both sides. It dips in the middle, so it's almost like a U from side to side. Another feature that is way easy to lose if you're just looking at this thing photographed like this online, there is tremendous depth and a wonderful sense of almost a diminishing perspective as the way it warps the light creates the impression of chapter rings inboard that actually aren't there. Now you can see that the dial itself at first glance appears a bit flat, but if you look more closely you can see that there is a tachymeter scale outboard. The dial with rose gold chapter rings, hands, applique, and logo features a rich blue lacquer and a matching monotone blue date disc. Now the timepiece is a flyback chronograph, something that got lost in the discussion of the model, and that is a standard feature of the new caliber 4401. We'll take a look at it in just a moment, but I want to call attention to my favorite parts of this dial, the chapter ring, which gives it that third dimension that's missing in the head-on shots, and then the fact that the registers themselves have big, broad, beveled rose gold chapter rings, giving the style more color and reflective character than it appears to have if you're just looking at press photography. Press photography normally makes watches look sexier than they are. They actually made this one look a lot worse, but it plays well in person, and as you can see, the case back is is impressive. This is the new manufactured caliber 4401, AP finally doing away with the old Piguet 1185s. A lot to talk about here. First of all, it's big, broad, and open. It's a properly sized movement for a 41 millimeter case, so you don't get the sense that the movement itself is undersized. Properly built for the case size, you can see it's shock resistant thanks to a full balance bridge and a free sprung index. It beats way at 28,800 vibrations per hour. It has both stop seconds and a quick set date. And the chronograph mechanism, in addition to being a flyback standard from the factory, features a black polished column wheel and a vertical clutch. So the engagement, thanks to the vertical clutch, is very smooth. There's no jump or stagger. And the pusher feel is among the best in the business, thanks to a perfectly tuned column wheel. You will 
just have too much fun playing with it. And I have to say it joins the likes of Zenith, Rolex, and whew, let's put them up with Alango and Zona in terms of pusher feel for a chronograph. Again, three day power reserve, 40 joules, very nicely made, 30 meters water resistant. So this is not an aquatic watch, but then again, you've got an offshore for that. You can see though, it's principally mechanically finished. It is handsomely decorated and thoughtfully designed. So everything is visible and beautiful. It's a bi-directional winder, so it doesn't have that unidirectional wobble that's common today. And it uses ceramic rotor bearings, so it's better able to last between services. So Better efficiency, less maintenance, ceramic bearings, rose gold case, blue dial, flyback chronograph, hugely underrated. Email tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.